I'm Lisa Senecal. I'm Maya May, and We're Speaking starts now. Holy shit. Wow. Welcome to... (laughs) It's the second week of 2022, and it feels like a year. Yeah, it feels like we should be celebrating New Year's Eve 2023 in like a couple of weeks. This has been... Uh, this has been slow so far, but uh, <laughs> hopefully it's going to become so much fun that it just breezes right by and ends with a great celebration in November yes. for democracy. So. Democracy. I'm a big fan of democracy continuing, and we that is what we are all about, and we're coming at it with a lot of energy this year. Last week, uh, we talked with the authors of The Steal and why it's actually hard to steal an election, and this week, we're talking about lies. Yeah, lies, which apparently uh, we're hardwired to do from the moment we take our first breath. (laughs) I knew that, though. Like, anybody who's been around a kid or a toddler. Oh, they're outstanding liars to a hilarious degree at times. But uh, unfortunately, not all the lies are funny as people grow Mm -hmm. up. So we're going to be talking about uh, lies, little and the big lie. The big lie. The huge, huge lie. And apparently lies, the bigger, the better. And it feels right now like we're living in a world where it's like, you know, finally Biden actually called it a lie, right? Like use the word lie, which is a very big deal. A president, I don't believe, has ever called their predecessor um, out on lying. Uh, And so it's like we're in a new world in 2022 where maybe we're calling it as it is. Um, And it's really important for us on our show. We always want to give you the kind of tools that you need to be able to understand what's happening right now. So uh, that's part of the reason why we are going to be talking to tonight's guest, uh, because we want to talk about why lies are so effective um, and what we in the majority, the ones who actually believe in truth and facts, like can do to reach those who have built their worldview around Trump's big lie. Yes, on a tower of lies. So we have Audrey Radin coming up. I'm really excited to talk with her. She has a phenomenal book, which is both terrifying and hilarious (laughs) at the same time. Yes, Not not easy to accomplish, but she's done it. She did. (laughs) Um, But before we can get to that, I'm afraid we need to take a look at last week in the Republican Party. So if you're losing faith in Donald Trump, you're really losing faith in the God that put him in office. And that's a dangerous thing, okay? Everyone needs to leave Twitter. This is a platform that thinks it's more important. It thinks that it's appointed itself as God. They're not sane like us. They're not rational like us. Like us and Mike Lindell. Is when I'm on the program with other speakers, they look and sound a lot more intelligent, you know, because I'm there. The way I phrased things yesterday, it, it was sloppy and, and it was frankly dumb. And, I don't and buy that. The- whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, I don't oh. buy that. For, look, I've known you a long time. How about the 13 elite bloodlines that have robbed us all blind? all our life and bamboozled us all our life? Insurrection. Coup. And it, of course, it terrorism. Was insurrection. Saying it's an insurrection is a political term. It's a lie. I've repeatedly denounced it. They want these kids to hate this country. Uh, They want them to reject our founding, our institutions. If a government is allowed to mandate a medical procedure in China, they mandate abortions in some cases. Is this where we could possibly go? We need to take America back from the nerds. I'm telling you right now, on the authority of the Bible, If Donald Trump does not get out in front of this vaccine nonsense, he is going to lose his voter base in the next coming election. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. And they keep expecting everybody to sit down there, lay down there and take it. Well, honey, I'm not no homosexual. I don't lay down for nobody. I don't take it from nobody. What is the difference between a democracy and a republic? A democracy is my rule. 
a republic is freedom, liberty, justice, all of that. This is America, you guys. This is America. If this is America, if this that's is America. America. I don't know. Like maybe I just want to walk away. That's crazy town. It's it's <laughs> a, no. A, according to uh, the guy with the Mike Lindell <laughs> thingies that he seems attached to, they're the same ones, and we're all crazy. Um, this is America, but it's only a slice of America, yes. and and we have to keep bringing ourselves back to remembering that what we just saw is not the majority of America. They're just really freaking loud. And we, the pro-democracy forces, need to be louder than they are. We absolutely do need to be because it could possibly spread because that's one thing that I learned about lies uh, in reading Asia Raiden's book is that lies uh, spread very, very quickly. So we have to be incredibly loud with the truth and make it just as titillating. Um, our guest tonight, uh, she actually, she has us wondering if we can trust babies and butterflies. I don't trust butterflies after this book. I don't trust anything. Uh, she's the author of the New York Times bestseller, Stoned, Jewelry, Obsession, and How Desire Shapes the World, and the recently released and very timely, The Truth About Lies. Uh, she first actually though caught our attention. Welcome, Aja, how are you? Hi. <laughs> So you actually, we were just talking about this before you, uh, before we came on, uh, you actually caught my attention with a tweet, uh, a tweet, a thread actually that went viral, um, <laughs> yeah. that kind of shifted the perspective on what 2021 was. Uh, can you start there? Yeah, it was New Year's Eve and everybody was going, you know, to hell with 2021. That was terrible the way everybody is done the last few years on New Year's Eve. And I'll admit 2020 was not a great year. So I, I kind of could go with it that year. But I just thought, no, it wasn't. It was not a terrible year. It was actually a pretty great year in a lot of ways. And so, you know, I just started writing this Twitter thread about, you know, what are you talking about? It was a wonderful year. There was a coup and it failed and we all got to watch it live on tv fail spectacularly and these idiots brought their phones with them like gps tracking devices <laughs> and took selfies and now they're all being arrested and then we got vaccines and blue georgia and free britney and lots of wonderful unprecedented numbers of wonderful things happen just one after another, after another, after another, all year long. Yes, you right? saw the truth, yeah. the actual truth through the forest of lies that has been kind of been shoved down our throats, which um, is pretty amazing. We're all liars, uh, <laughs> our, apparently, we're all we're hearing. Um, we have a clip that we wanted to pull really quickly as we're starting, um, Tucker Carlson. At least he owns it. Yeah, he owns it. <laughs> I mean, I lie. If I'm really cornered or something, I lie. I really try not to. I try never to lie on TV. I, try, I just don't, you know, I don't like lying. I certainly do it, you know, out of weakness or whatever. Well, I talked okay. five lies right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that I know of. And, and I think the top one is I don't like to lie. I think Tucker loves I try lying. not to do it on TV. Right. <laughs> yeah, well, he doesn't make it through much past his name introducing himself on the show without uh, lying. And I, I would even like to go back and make sure that is actually his name. I was about to say, season. isn't it Swanson? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes, it is. Lying about his name even. <laughs> so we brought up the babies a couple of times um, because babies are liars and uh, for good reason, good evolutionary reason, staying alive is important. Um, so you talk about that in your book. Obviously Tucker didn't outgrow it and babies don't outgrow it. So tell us what is this foundation of lies that we are apparently all built on? Well, you know, it's complicated because it, there are a lot of reasons for it, but the, the fact of the matter is we all lie and it's not just humans everything lies you mentioned butterflies um right now we're having a hard time with the virus because part of the way vaccines work is that 
they lie to viruses and then viruses try to get around them and evade them by lying back. And that's what's going on with these mutations. They're, they're just outsmarting each other. And viruses lie, bacteria lie, everything that communicates lies. It's a form of communication. And what babies are doing when they lie is they're learning to communicate, just like playing peekaboo, like trying to make words, like it's an important evolutionary adaptation and we all figure out how to do it. So and if a if a baby, if a toddler hasn't figured out how to lie by the time they're, you know, a couple of years old, a developmental psychologist will be worried about that baby. Huh. They'll be like, mm. Yeah, so, at least it's cute. Right. But <laughs> you then also talk about how truth is what we all agree on. That, that that kind of consensus is the kind of foundation bedrock of a functioning society. So what happens now that it feels like everyone's lying to everybody and we're living in this post-truth, post-reality world? What happens now? Well, that's the thing. We talk about truth, but we use that concept sort of interchangeably with facts. And facts are concrete. They're not negotiable. Facts are what they are, whether you agree on them or not, whether you know about them or not. You know, one plus one equals two, and that was true before you knew it. And it's true whether or not you agree with me, because it's a fact. Truth is a slightly more nebulous concept. Truth is part of the social contract. It's all of the things that we've collectively agreed together are true. Like my $20 bill is worth $20. That's true because we've all decided it is. And we've all decided to continue to honor that. Right? Yeah. What's happening right now is the social contract is somewhat broken. Because a lot of us have stopped honoring these things that we've all agreed upon, like the winner of the election is the person who got the most votes. Or what I said yesterday, I have to agree I said yesterday tomorrow. Right. I can't just go on TV and go, I didn't say that. Right. Yeah, I can't see that film you're rolling of me saying <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, so it's starting to pull at the fabric of society that the majority of us are standing here going, I can see you. I have <laughs> tape of you saying yeah. it. And then the minority of us are going. No, you don't. No, you didn't. Cause look, what do you do at that point? Right. Yeah. It's well, crazy making. Yeah. Because, and, it, and part of the reason it's crazy making is because we've all been using truth and fact interchangeably and they're not. Right. They're not interchangeable. The truth is a terrifyingly nebulous concept. And at some point we have to acknowledge that it's really just the cumulative whole of what we've agreed to believe together. Mm -hmm. Well, there are a lot of people who have now come to agree together that the big lie is true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, we know that currently when we talk about the big lie, we're talking about the lie that Biden didn't actually legitimately win the 2020 presidential election. But the concept of the big lie long predates 2020 and Donald Trump. Um, the bigger the lie, the better. So tell us, what is the overall concept of the big lie and why does it work so well? Because it's worked spectacularly before. It's worked many times in many places, and sometimes it's horrific. The, the big lie before now most often referred to Hitler and his big lie. Uh, but it, it's worked hilariously in stupid ways. Like a lot of people sold the Brooklyn Bridge who didn't own it. I mentioned that in the first chapter of my book. It was a very common scam a little over 100 years ago to sell the Brooklyn Bridge to people. That's where the phrase, if you believe that, I have a bridge to sell you comes from oh. it's amazing how many people bought the B brooklyn bridge but the reason it works has to do with what i was saying about truth being what we agree to believe and most there are different kinds of lies and they work differently and most of them though rely upon subverting our sense of reality or tricking or subverting our perception of reality. What is so insidious about a big lie, any big lie, is that it doesn't do that. 
it straight up relies upon our objective sense of reality. It doesn't work without it. Like, it relies upon the fact that we all share a sense of objective reality. You know, up is up, down is down. I know you know that. You know I know that. And it relies upon the fact that we all share a theory of mind, which is the idea that I know what you're thinking, you know what I'm thinking in a broad sense. Mm -hmm. And when you tell someone a huge, outrageous, stupid lie, if you don't seem insane, like get the big butterfly net and straight jacket insane, we more or less believe you because mm -hmm. only a crazy person would tell a giant lie like that and expect someone to believe it. So in, in, in history, there's somebody you talked about in your book, Gregor McGregor. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And I honestly, even as I was reading it in your book, I was like, this, is this true? Like, this has to be made up. Um, is Trump uh, basically a, a, the Gregor McGregor of right now, like leading yeah. his followers yeah. to s almost certain death? <laughs> yeah. And, and it's a horrifying story. And the most horrifying part of it is the end. Not how many of them died, but the fact that the ones who didn't defended him. Right. They came back and they defended him in court and they said, it wasn't his fault. He didn't do this to us. Must have been somebody else. Oh, if we, can you let people, can you tell people who Gregor McGregor is? Because I don't think this is, I feel like this isn't common. No. <laughs> okay. So back in the, the heyday of colonialism, this uh, down on his luck Scottish, you know, would have been aristocrat if his family weren't bankrupt, went off adventuring in South America, came back, I'm sure that means horrible things. I don't even know what he did really, I, a lot of bad things. Came back, said, hey, I swindled the potentate of the country of Poyais out of ownership of his own country and I own it now. I am the Prince of Poyais. <laughs> Who wants to go live there? I will sell you a plantation. I will send you, I will sell you titles of nobility. If you're not that rich, I'll just like sell you a farm. It's wonderful. Look, I've brought back fancy natives all dressed up so you can meet them. Brought back botanical samples. He sells the hell out of it. Like all oh, razzle dazzle. Documents in bo a book. He actually a created a book. book. <laughs> like, in strange ways uh, about Poyais and like, I mean, he really sells it, man. He gets hundreds of colonists on boat after boat, sends them out to live in Poyais, drives the bond price, because he's now selling shares in Poyais on the market. <laughs> Sir Gregor McGregor, because the king has knighted him to make sure it stays a loyal British colony, of course. Of course. Sends boatloads of colonists to Poyais. You know, you're thinking... He doesn't really own Poyais. He didn't really win it in a card game or whatever. In fact, he made it up. Poyais never existed. It, it's not a place. He made up a whole country. There is no Poyais. He sent them out in boats to just die. Just out into the ocean to die. Now, luckily for them, these first two boats, the Honduras Packet and the Canersley Castle, shipwrecked off on, on the Mosquito Coast, like just off of Nicaragua. And um, most of them did die though, because that's like a very terrible place to be. It is to this day, that section of the Mosquito Coast, pretty much undeveloped because you can't live there. It's, it's like horrible weather and full of insects that'll give you malaria and there's nothing to eat. Most of them die. Handful of them get picked up a year or two later by a passing ship, when they bring them back, this is the horrific part of the story, he's still running his con and they're like, what happened? And they're like, well, it wasn't him. He must have been betrayed by the ship captains mm -hmm. or the colony must have been destroyed or... What is know. that? Because you talk about that in your book, that concept of when somebody's worldview is attached to a lie, <laughs> They have to defend right. it. Can you talk yeah. a little bit about that? Desperation to continue to believe. Well, the desperation to maintain some functioning cognitive model of the world that makes sense. Because if you've killed your family by accident, you've thrown away everything you owned, all of your money, all of your land, your 
your spouse, your children, your friends are dead. You did this to yourself because you believed a con artist. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're, I don't know, in jail for laying siege to the Capitol. I don't know, something like that. Um, <laughs> you're confronted with the idea that you, you did this. You believed something so outrageously stupid that it's really just you and a few hundred other people. Yeah, so believing that, kind of that, believing that it was true, has become integral to your ideas about yourself, about the world, about other people who didn't believe it, and also about your ability to discern what is and isn't true. So you can't just, you know, knock it out like a wall you don't want anymore because it's load bearing. You, you really can't get rid of it. It's become a load-bearing belief. And at that point, you're faced with such intense cognitive dissonance that you'll go to court and say, it wasn't him. He didn't do this to me. It had to be something, something stupid. So we see this happening with Trump supporters and people who are still buying into um, the big lie. But yeah, it had to be the Illuminati. Yes, yeah. <laughs> of course, of course, yeah. it's, it always gets back to the Illuminati. Mm -hmm. um, We're everywhere. But it's just, it, <laughs> it's nice of you to join us this evening. It's always us. <laughs> I knew it, it was the diamonds, it's the jewels, I knew it. That's right. <laughs> but that, that um, it, it's not even just that people are consciously trying to find ways to tell people why this is still true this is this is really defense mental defense mechanism yeah. before your psychological world shatters yeah so what is the way that you reach into that and bring people back out of it in a way that they aren't either devastated or they they go deep oh my favorite example is anti-vaxxers um yeah. That when they want a way out of it, they look for uh, a way to build permission structures because mm -hmm. they're never going to say, I was wrong. I said vaccines were crazy and now my spouse is dead or my parent is dead or my child is dead. They're going to say, these vaccines are terrible, but I have to get one because it's those damn libs. But if I take a bath in borax afterwards, it'll be fine. <laughs> So we have to permission structure. I, I was going to say that that concept permission structure, and so I think that's probably um, a part of the toolkit that people can yeah. use then to talk to their friends and family who have who believe the big lie in a way yeah. is help them uh, build these permission structures to give them permission yeah. to come you out. You have to like do this. it, or okay. you'll be fired. Well, it's not my fault. I had to do it, right. and it's okay because I'm going to take a bath in borax afterwards. Okay. So. I'm clean, literally and figuratively. I mm -hmm. still get to be an anti-vaxxer, which is integral to my sense of self, but I've been vaccinated, which deep down I know I needed to be. Uh, it's an elaborate permission structure. I like this. I like this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there are, there are a lot of different things that we could have in our toolkit, but so much of this is understanding so much of what I learned reading your book, it really is an incredibly um, entertaining, educational, and as I said at the top of the show, slightly terrifying um, book, but it's it's great. There, so there are all these different things that you talk about it, in it, and one of them that I find really interesting is confirmation bias, um, because it's confirmation bias has always been, it's like you start, uh, Someone tells you something, you believe it, all of a sudden you start seeing evidence all around you that confirms that you're right to believe whatever it is you've seen. Has the internet just blown this up and made confirmation bias just insanely easy to get now? Confirmation bias has always been insanely easy. Like you just read this new book. Now you're gonna see confirmation bias everywhere, right? right? So we all do it all the, I mean, if there's something you should get from this book, it's we all do it. 
all the time. We all lie all the time. We all believe crazy things all the time. We we all are subject to confirmation bias and cognitive dissonance and things like the illusory truth effect and mirror exposure and all of these things all the time. The world we construct around ourselves is, is just barely real and hardly shared with each other. So, but yeah, the internet has blown everything up and made it much bigger and much weirder. And the most interesting, so yes, to answer your question, absolutely. If you're looking for confirmation of something you already believe, just push the buttons on the magic box and it will be presented to you just instantly. But the interesting thing about the internet, just like the pandemic, um, just like everything that's going on right now is we have been here before. I wrote in the chapter about snake oil that this is actually America's second opioid epidemic. Mm -hmm. And um, this moment in time when we can't stop starting cults and we can't stop acting super crazy. This happened last time we had a massive boom in technology when electricity was being spread all over the country and there were world's fairs and there were talking dolls and there were gramophones and and there were electric turbines and and everybody was like, what? That's Mm -hmm. real? No, it's not. It is. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not. It is. Oh, okay. So seances are real, right? Oh, (laughs) okay. I'm going to join a cult. Like, and so many cults were started in that decade. So many cults. It's crazy. Lots of them are still around. And And that's what's going on right now because it's just too much new. People cannot be expected, mere humans, to take in that much change in just like two decades and still be able to just, you know, discern what's real and what isn't. Right. It is information overload. And it's it's interesting because right now what we uh, assume to be true, um, you talk about authority uh, bias. And um, I know we're running out of time, but I definitely wanted you to touch on that because we see the OANs, the Fox News and all of these, you know, what people believe to be true news outlets. And these people who are speaking who's just like could be some guy in his basement saying yeah. whatever, but he's on the thing that looks like a TV. What, yeah. what does that lead us? What dangerous road does that lead us down? <laughs> oh, humans have, okay, so all lies are designed in some way to exploit a cognitive or neurological loophole in the way we think. And those loopholes exist because they're attached to some advantage some advantage in the way we think that has served us well in evolution. And like honesty bias is the most fundamental one. We are all biased to simply believe what we're told. And if that weren't true, we couldn't learn to talk. We couldn't learn anything. If, if somebody didn't just present you with information, you went, okay. Unfortunately, the flip side of that is sometimes people present you with information and you go, okay. And that's the simplest form of lying. Authority bias is that as a hierarchical group, which we are as primates, we have a bias toward believing, trusting, submitting to authority figures. If somebody's wearing a white coat, like a doctor, we go, yes, doctor. If somebody shows us a badge, we go, yes, officer. If you ask someone a question and you perceive them to be an authority figure, any kind of authority figure, you are more likely to believe them. And that means if you ask a police officer, how do I install Chrome on my computer? And he tells you, you're more likely to believe him than just like a random person, even though you know intellectually, he has no more information about it than your friend. You have a bias toward authority. So when you see somebody on a screen, a famous person who tells you, I have the secrets to youth and longevity, you believe them because they're famous. Or if they're on OAN and there's a little logo in the corner, you go, that's a famous news person. They must know the news because they have authority. They have the weight of authority behind them. And you can't help it because it's just built into how we think. So really, because, you know, here we are on a box doing that thing. It it goes back to I wish we I wish we had like two hours right now because there's so much I want to talk about because it really just goes down to it feels like we're in a battle over what's over what the consensus of reality is going to be. It is that is such an important point. And that's why it feels so 
scary right now, actually, that there's this whole chunk of society, and you're right, they're not big, they're just loud. What, what like 30% of people vote, maybe, when you think about the fact that it's adults, and it's not even half of adults, and then, like, what percentage of them vote Republican, and what percentage of Republicans are for Trump? What is that, like, 12% of people, adults in the country are these loud, crazy, angry people? It's not that many, but it feels scary because really what they're fighting with us over is the fact that they've realized they can break the social contract just by going, no, I don't, I don't care that you can see me, that you remember what I said yesterday. So what they're really fighting with us over is maybe we don't want to agree with you about what reality is anymore. Maybe we're going to make up something else and maybe our reality is going to be the new reality if we fight you hard enough about it. Damn. You see, that's, <laughs> what, they're that's what they're actually doing. Maybe we're going to write the new reality. Right. Which it's we horrifying. cannot. Cannot. No. Allow Absolutely not. Absolutely no. not, everybody. No. No. <laughs> but that's not most of them. Most of them have just like believed a big lie or joined a cult. That's the Roger Stones and the Steve Bannons and right. the Mercers. That's the people who are going, we're going to fight you hard enough and we're going to invent a new reality. Right. Right. But they don't have to win. And we, we not do have, win. yeah, we have the tools to fight back against this. 2021 didn't suck the way we great, all thought actually. it did. It was a great year. Was a great year. 22 is going to be better. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> We're is. We're creating the reality. Yeah. That, because there's a lot of kinds yes. of disinformation. And yes. once you recognize them, they don't work anymore. It's right. like right. breaking a spell. And despair disinformation works like that. When people tell you 2021 was horrible and thank God it's over. Actually, it wasn't. It was great. Wonderful things happened all year long. So think about that okay. and recognize when people are peddling despair so that you'll just give up and not even show up for the fight. Because that's one kind of disinformation. Right. And we were talking about another kind is just that information overload that makes January feel like it was the longest year ever. Right. Yep. yep. No, we have to keep it all, all in perspective and educate ourselves and a brilliant way to do that is by reading your book, The Truth yes. About Lies. Pick up the book, y'all. <laughs> yeah, please do. It is really a fantastic read. Fun read. Yep. Really fun read. <laughs> Chock yeah. full of information, so many concepts, um, but also just it is really enjoyable and terrifying. But yeah, awesome <laughs> well, that's what I strive for. Yes. <laughs> You succeeded. Audrey Raiden, thank you so much for being with us tonight. This has been wonderful. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> I love it. I, I The permission structures, that piece of thing is like, I feel like so key um, yeah. is it, for anybody who's watching who needs to walk somebody out of a, a cult. Uh, I'm sorry, not out of a cult, out of Fox News. Um, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, I, th I think it's... Uh, we need to be rational in the way we handle things because when we're working with people and having friends and families who are feeling really irrational, we're not going to win that argument by being like, you're wrong, you're crazy. We know that. Um, and we talked about that. It's in the book. And I think that's, that's, I think we just have to keep reminding ourselves of that over and over and over again, um, because the disinformation, and this is a new concept to me, the idea of, um, this, that everything's terrible disinformation is well, yet another tactic. It's like, yeah, of course, now that yeah, makes sense. Overwhelm people so they go into yeah. a position and don't fight any longer. And we can't do that. And yeah. We're not going to do it. Or absolutely not. So um, one of the cures is calling it out, which is what we are doing. Um, but so much of the Republican leadership is actually, unfortunately, suffering from a newly um, discovered condition. So yeah, I, I, it's, it's real. To, yeah, um, we've we've actually made a, a PSA to help. Um, We're all about helping. We want to help. Yeah. Yeah. So please uh, check it out and share. You've been struggling with it for years, but your condition has become undeniable. Some say you've become unrecognizable. You're spineless. I was in the sixth grade. I turn on the TV. I watch Jimmy Carter have a sweater on and tell me to turn the heater down. But the Spineless Center can help or determine if you're beyond help. 
Our exclusive therapies offer hope to those afflicted by spinelessness, which can manifest as weak knees, lily liver, gutless wonder, heart conditions such as chicken heart and being faint of heart, a lack of desire to defend or continue living in a democracy. I wasn't saying that the thousands of peaceful protesters supporting Donald Trump are somehow terrorists. And an otherwise inexplicable urge for a new pet like a scaredy cat or jellyfish. Our treatments are all provided under general anesthesia. That's really for us, so we don't have to listen to your bullshit conspiracies and outright lies about the 2020 election being stolen. If anybody tells you the 2020 election was not stolen, they are lying to you. And remember, at the Spineless Center, we're here for you, even if you're not there for our democracy. This is the other solution. Get your, I don't know if it's going to be covered by insurance. <laughs> but people need to get some of their friends and family members, some of our politicians to yeah. find the center near you. Yes, as soon as possible. Unfortunately, I'm sure there's a lot of, there are a lot of open appointments because I haven't seen a whole lot of Republicans lining up to uh, no. get new spines. They're like, I, I don't want to go to spineless center. No, <laughs> we're good. We're good. <laughs> no, they need to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and we're seeing, we're seeing so many examples of it. We saw Ted Cruz, a little clip a couple of times, both in that piece and in our last week in the Republican party, when he was on with Tucker Carlson and became a complete jellyfish as he backpedaled and tried to, um, you know, get back in dear leaders, good graces, which apparently now, you know, the, the arbiter of what those good graces are is Tucker Carlson. And, and he's going to police the Republican party. Um, it's really, it's terrifying, but here we are. It, yeah, here we are. Um, and, it, you know, but we are going to be here as the antidote uh, to, to, to counterbalance um, because truly, I think what we're seeing is that the truth eventually will prevail as long as we are loud with it. Um, I think they have uh, they have fucked around, I think is what they've done. They fucked around and they're going to gonna find out. They're going to find out, which um, <laughs> we decided we'd put that on a shirt. Um, let's see it. Do we have the shirt? We got the graphic. Yeah, it's a new team. That's a team. It's I'm, we're starting a basketball league, actually. The Lincoln Ladies. <laughs> so that's the women's team. Sucks, so if anybody wants to sub in for me, that would be cool. <laughs> you can get your fuck around and find out tea on our on our, our website. We might have one for the dudes. I don't know the Lincoln Logs. I don't know. We're the Lincoln <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> please, please, yes. I think we need that. Um, oh. Thanks, everybody, for being here with us this week. We will see you uh, again next week. Don't miss the breakdown tomorrow night uh, with Tara and Rick at 7 p.m. Eastern for Pacific. And we will be back next Wednesday at the same time. Yes, we will. And then stay tuned because we are going to re-air the town hall uh, from last week right after the show. And it covers our 2022 strategy. So definitely important to check it out. Um, other than that, we will see you next week. Bye, everybody.